Welcome to a total legit guide for Korra, the dominatrix. Whoa, wait a second. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry for that. Welcome to a total legit guide for Korra, the mommy. What is wrong with this kid? Korra is one of my favorite Warframes, so now that I'm done with these three fucks, I can finally do what I want. You can't stop me now. I have harnessed the power of the Holy Whip, and now it's time to use it in order to commit some blasphemous acts, like telling new players about the Second Dream, or playing Nunauru. With Korra, you basically embody the idea that hurting people is okay, and it also feels damn satisfying. Nothing feels better in this game than landing a 1 million damage whiplock crit on a group of enemies and just having your cat stare at it like Do it again. Okay, let's get to her abilities and there's a lot to talk about so get your fucking notes and paper cause I'm going to try to fucking explain this whole thing Holy shit, there's a lot Korra's passive is Venari. Venari is Korra's Kavad companion that behaves just like a normal Kavad companion would. Korra gains a 15% extra movement speed buff while Venari is alive. If Venari dies, she will respawn after 45 seconds or if you use her third ability. We'll get to that later. Honestly, Venari is not bad. She is a Kavad which is already pretty good since Kavad aren't as useless as the suicidal dogs. What's great about Venari is that she is very aggressive, usually attacking enemies as soon as she sees them and she does slash damage and applies slash procs. Honestly, she just functions like a normal companion, so mod her like you would a Kavak. Maybe add pack leader if you subsume her 3 so you can heal her, but overall, she's not bad. Korra's 1 is Whipclaw. Why do all these abilities have so much text? Essentially, Korra cracks her whip to where you aim, creating an explosion 10 meters away from you. The explosion itself is a 5 meter radius from whatever the whip hits. Enemies hit by it receive 300% base damage. And it also knocks back enemies at the center. <laughs> the ability is affected by range, strength and melee mods and it costs 25 energy. The ability also takes into account your melee combo counter and has an innate 25 crit chance, 200% crit multiplier and 20 status chance. Damn that's a lot of math. So here's why all this shit matters. The fact that Whipclaw is affected by melee mods also means that damage can be increased by melee mods. It also means that since it also takes into account combo counter, you can put mods that work off of combo counters like Blood Rush and Gladiator mods and stack crit chance on Whipclaw. Basically Basically think of Whipclaw as a long range melee attack that drains energy. But Moon, this is basically any good melee weapon, what's the point of using this then? I will whip your stupid ass. Raise your hand before you talk. Now let me explain this. So being able to add more damage to this and having it be ranged is already kind of good. But what pushes it further is the augment for this ability, Accumulating Whipclaw, which grants a 35% bonus damage stack if you hit more than 3 enemies with Whipclaw. This augment stacks up to 300 150% bonus damage. Yeah, so take the regular damage that Whipclaw deals, add a shit ton of crit chance thanks to gladiator mods and blood rush and whatever else you want to put on your melee weapon and add 350% bonus damage and we're not even fucking done. Her second ability is Ensnare. Korra binds a targeted enemy in a 30 meters range with her living metal for 15 seconds, causing them to be completely disabled. After half a second, the living metal pulls nearby enemies with a 10 meters radius, causing them to be ensnared too. That's called bondage. Damn kid, what are they teaching you in school? I don't... I don't go to school. Oh. Oh yeah, that explains a lot. Oh fuck off. This ability is affected by duration and rage mods and it costs 50 energy. While this ability is a great CC tool, its main use is to buff Whipclaw and make accumulating Whipclaw and Blood Rush easier to stack since it also causes ensnared enemies to take 200% extra damage from Whipclaw. <laughs> and Venari. Whipclaw also causes it to pull more enemies. This shit is fucking insane. Not only does it provide exactly what she wants, a group of helpless and juicy enemies for her to whip and torture as she pleases, but it also gives you a 200% extra damage from your ability that already deals an insane amount of damage. Man, I just love Korra. 
Like, honestly, like, she's my top three. Yeah, I let her step on me. Who's the simp now? Okay, you know what? Maybe you're right. Or maybe I should just play more Korra and keep you locked up in the Warframe storage room. Fuck you. You'd go to jail. Chorus 3 is Venari. Again. So again, Korra has her sadistic cat, Venari. Pressing this ability allows you to control and direct her to do what you want, to a limited degree. <laughs> it also respawns Venari if she dies. It costs 25 energy to execute a command and 50 to revive Venari. This ability has three commands for Venari to execute. She attack, she protect, but most importantly, she leaves you to fucking die. Using the ability on an enemy marks them for 2 minutes. Venari then chases and executes one of her commands. Attack mode causes Venari to assault enemies, making her snare them. When Venari snares an enemy, she chains them for 2.5 seconds and deals 5 hits, each dealing 350 slash damage and a guaranteed slash proc. If command mode is left on without a mark, snare will have a 3 seconds cooldown, but you can bypass it by choosing a target again. Snare is affected by Kavat melee mods and Koro's ability strength. Additionally, if you have sharpened claws on Venari, it also applies the bonus damage and armor strip, which is so fucking good, especially if you need to deal with a really tough Eximus unit or even a Kuva Lich or Sister. If I make another video for a frame that has an entire college course for their abilities, I will I'll let Korra whip me, I swear. So anyways, next episode is about Sevagoth. This kid needs therapy. Yeah, no shit. Protect mode causes Venari to protect Korra and use Tail Whip. Tail Whip makes Venari knock down a single enemy and disarming them. It has a cooldown like Snare but can be bypassed by marking an enemy. I don't know why you would use this in not attack mode. It's not like an AoE CC or anything. It's just one target and they receive like no damage and it has no benefits. Who, who thought about this? You have in Snare. I don't get it. Heal mode commands Venari to the lowest health ally in the squad and allows her to use revitalize on them, radiating an aura in a 10 meters radius that heals for 50 HP per second. This ability would be so fucking great if Venari would actually like use it when you needed it. Even if you command her, she sometimes just stands there like she's just maliciously waiting for you to die, like the little bitch that she is. What the fuck is going on? Oh, because I swapped it out. This ability is not bad, honestly, although heal mode is a bitch to use. And just don't use protect mode. I personally like to just subsume it out, since, as I mentioned in her passive, you can use pack litter and it works off of your ripclaw too. So you won't need to resummon her, and she's basically stuck on attack mode, which is the best one. It kinda gives you like an extra ability. What you can subsume on here can vary. You can use gloom and have life seal on ripclaw. You can use breach surge and increase your your damage by a fuckload, or use elemental war to be a bit more tanky and multiply your damage even more. Or just say fuck it and stick pillage on there. It really depends on your playstyle and what you need, you can stick a lot of abilities here. And finally Korra's ult is Strangle Dome. Korra creates a stationary dome of living chains over 5 meters around her that lasts for 20 seconds. The dome has 26 spots from which it can capture enemies within a 10 meters radius. Enemies caught are ragdolled and suspended for the entire duration of the ability and dealt 250 damage a second. Enemies captured also take 200% bonus damage from your weapons and abilities, except for Whipclaw. For Whipclaw, it takes the damage that's dealt to the target hit by it and applies 50% of it to the other enemies in the dome as bonus damage. Captured enemies also receive friendly fire and provoke other enemies to shoot them. It's affected by all mods and costs 100 energy. It has an augment that causes enemies that die in the dome to have a 65% chance to drop extra loot, so you can use this to farm resources if you want. Just keep in mind, if you want to main Korra, you actually have to wear these kinds of clothes. Korra actually gets enhanced if you wear these clothes. I'm sorry, those are the rules, you just have to do it. What the fuck are you talking about? Shush! I am going to get fucking removed for this video. <laughs> There are so many ways that you can use this. For example, defend an objective, part of enemies, or use it for damage. 
I like to use it in order to group enemies since it works with her too as well. So you get bonus damage from both abilities or as a- Oh god, that's a lot of enemies. Ability to make things easier to handle, like in the steel path. Honestly, this doesn't have a specific use, but it's also really useful for Korra. Basically what you do with Korra is you just do this and that and a little bit of this and that's what we call sadism. Okay, did you get all that? Cause it's time to move on to our builds and there's a lot here too. So if you need to like, I don't know, take a piss, grab a fucking snack, do it now cause otherwise I'll sit you in the corner for interrupting. Korra is a very versatile frame so you can go with a few different playstyles to suit your situation or just whatever you want. It's a matter of preference. Let's start with this. If you have no access to Helminth and just want to use Korra, this build will get you through like 90% of things that Korra can be used for. You will be able to deal damage and mostly survive and you can change a few things to make her a bit more tanky or to have more efficiency. Whatever you want. This is the base for the rest of the builds since Korra loves range and efficiency. This build is more about being a tank. It's used if you 100% don't want to die like for the steel path. We also use Molt Augmented since we give up on Ability Strength mod to have adaptation. The main thing here is subsuming Chroma's Elemental Ward and using the Cold version in order to get tankier. Plus it gives you a damage multiplier. So it works with Whip Claw pretty well. The next build is pure damage but less survivability, a bit more CC. Same as before but you put all the Umbra mods without adaptation and subsume Breach Hurts for extra damage, the multiplier and the CC. You can swap Umbra's strength for adaptation if you feel like it and it's hard to survive for you, but in general this build has three sources of CC so we're counting on those to keep us alive. And the only place that you might have an issue is the steel path. And the final build with gloom. This build is just like the damage build but with gloom. It has less damage since we don't have the damage multipliers but we can freely walk around and spam whip claws since gloom give us lifesteal. You can swap gloom with pillage here if you want. Also something that I found to be really useful is emergence dissipate. Especially on the gloom build because Korra can group a bunch of enemies and get energy back. And last thing, do not subsume Venari if you have no way to heal. Remember that all these builds rely on stacking Whip Claw, Molt Augmented and your crit multipliers. This Warframe literally stacks stacks on stacks and then multiplies the stacks with more multipliers and then she adds more stacks on those stacks and multipliers stacks. All of it comes together to create these glorious and beautiful million damage crits. Now Venari is built like this, change the elementals depending on your situation and we don't use vacuum here since we put vacuum on our other companion since we can have technically two with Venari so we can have more damage on Venari and no animal instinct anything else just put on your other companion your melee weapon should be whatever you want it to be as long as it's not a heavy attack weapon and this is the build since we want a lot of crit and elementals and we also want to have as much time to stack the combo multiplier so yeah overall Korra is one of the best frames in the game and in my opinion this is how a frame should be made. Good overall, scales into high levels, and she has a versatile kit that allows her to be customized to whatever playstyle fits you best, and allows you to dominate your enemies like the little beta bitches that they are. Okay, I think that we covered everything. I'll see you all on Monday next week. Don't forget to hand in your Korra is my mommy and here is why assignments on your way out. Kid, I think that we need to have a talk about your mommy issues. Uh, sorry, lesson's over. See ya. Oh, 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 oh,